Hello, Mr. and Mrs. America and all the ships at sea. I'm Michael Bain for Downrange Television and OutdoorChannel.com. And yes, we are back at the secret hidden bunker in the Rocky Mountains and safe from SHOT 2010 in Las Vegas. And yes, my feet are really tired. But first, the news of the week. Effective at the end of SHOT 2010, Todd Jarrett, one of the greatest competition shooters who've ever lived, is severing his relationship with Para USA. Now, for more than a decade, Todd's name has been synonymous with Para, not only as their factory shooter, but working in R&D on some of their most successful projects, including the Para LDA, Light Double Action System, and the new Para Tactical Target Rifle. Todd told us Friday afternoon late that he would be launching his own line of firearms, including a Todd Jarrett Signature 1911, and from other sources we hear, a Todd Jarrett Signature AR-15. Now, we're willing to bet you're going to see some competition pistols and rifles in there, but also for all the many police and law enforcement military people that Todd is presently working with. In a special meeting with Para USA executives, we've learned that one of their targeted areas for 2010 is explaining their TTR special system on the rifle to law enforcement and military and how that system is in fact superior not only to the existing AR-15 gas guns, but also to the new generation gas piston rifles. And believe me, gas pistons were two words that we heard constantly over the four days of SHOT 2010. Every year at SHOT, things happen that surprise even me. And this year's surprise came from an especially unlikely source. O.F. Mossberg and Sons, you know them for their shotguns, you know them for their rifles, but how about for their survival packs? Mossberg is now doing a line of ASAP packs that includes a lot of brand name survival gear, including GPS's, food, lights, water, gosh, everything you might need. Now, if that seems unlikely, consider who Mossberg worked with to put the packs together. Dr. Bob Arnott, who you're probably familiar with from morning shows like the Today Show and Fox News, has traveled around the world for the last 25 years covering human disasters. And there's probably nobody who knows more about what it takes to stay alive in those kind of disasters than Dr. Bob. Working with Mossberg, he created a series of survival packs, all the way from $199 up to $500. We talked to Bob at the SHOT Show just when he'd come back from Haiti. And one of the things he told us that he was using one of the Mossberg packs in Haiti and he was providing a lot of food and water to other journalists who didn't think to bring their own survival gear. We've got a great interview with Dr. Bob on the Mossberg ASAP packs on Downrange Television and OutdoorChannel.com. So check it out. And the next time you get ready to leave your house, hey, don't leave home without ASAP. Now, you've probably noticed all these blue machines here in the gun room at the secret hidden bunker. Of course, they're Dillon reloading presses, and Dillon is getting ready to add a new press. They are now formally taking orders for their 50 BMG progressive press. That press has been in development for a couple of years. A lot of people in the 50 BMG community have been waiting for it, because with a progressive press, you can load a lot more ammunition. I have one on order. I've been told by Dylan it will be shipping within the next two weeks. On the subject of 50 BMG, we also hear that Barrett, who, hey, practically created the niche, is interested in starting their own tactical target competition for BMG rifles. Now, that would be a great boon to those of us who like firing those big boomers, who like going out and competing with them. So we'll keep you on top of that as we get more information. And you can be sure that you'll see the very first of those competitions on Downrange TV and OutdoorChannel.com. In other competition news, we can tell you categorically that a major gun manufacturer is getting ready to dump a lot of money into Wild Bunch style shooting. Now, if you've been watching Shooting Gallery and Cowboys, you already know what Wild Bunch style shooting is. Essentially, it's cowboy shooting, but based on the movie The Wild Bunch. And the guns that are allowed are 1897 pump trench shotguns, 
major caliber lever action rifles, and the venerable 1911 semi-auto pistol. Hey, just like Pike in the movie The Wild Bunch. Now, Wild Bunch shooting has been really taking off, but it's going to get a tremendous boost when a major gun company steps into the field with a gun specially made for Wild Bunch shooting and endorsed by the Single Action Shooting Society. We fully expect the announcements to be in just a few weeks, as soon as the papers are signed, but you can watch for that on Downrange Television, where we're going to be covering Wild Bunch shooting both at the Cowboy Nationals, and that's Winter Range in Phoenix in February, and at the Cowboy World competitions in Detrail in New Mexico in June. We went undercover at SHOT 2010 to try to get some answers on the ammo crisis and what's happening generally. Well, we got mixed messages. Essentially, 5.56, 45 ACP, 9mm, 40 Smith & Wesson, and some 762, the 308 ammunition, is starting to come into the country in large amounts from importers. We're starting to see a lot more Russian ammunition available, and that is taking some of the heat off the market. If you check around on the internet using a tool like AmmoEngine.com, and of course anything we talk about here on the video podcast, you can go to Downrange.tv and get the links that can send you to any, any of the companies that we might mention. You'll see that ammo is now available, a lot more import ammunition. But in talking to some of the major people in the United States manufacturing, the situation doesn't seem so simple. Although the imports are taking some of the heat off the market, American manufacturers are still, for all intents and purposes, running at capacity. Now, one of the things I think we're going to see over the next year is we're going to see a return to normal, but it's not going to be the normal you remember. The bottom line is that you are going to be paying more for ammunition, and you're going to be paying that pretty much as the standard. It'll probably take several years after all the overseas war ends for the United States ammunition manufacturing capacity to get back to where it was, say, two to three years ago. So ammunition is still going to be in short supply sometimes. Components are still going to be in short supply because the components are going to the ammunition manufacturers. To stock up on 5.56, 9mm, 45, 40 Smith & Wesson, look to the Russians. Finally, a big shout out to Ruger for some long overdue changes in their venerable 2245 semi-auto 22 long rifle pistol. Now that was a gun designed to mimic the grip frame of a 1911, and this year Ruger's updated it so that it now takes 1911 grip panels. That makes it feel even more like a 1911, which is really helpful for when you want to get out there and practice with the cheaper ammo for your practical pistol, for USPSA, for IDPA, hey, even for SAS Wild Bunch. Remember, anything that we've talked about here, you can find the links on Downrange Television and OutdoorChannel.com, and be sure to visit both of those sites because we've got dozens and dozens of videos from SHOT 2010. A lot of those videos are already up, but over the next couple of weeks, we're going to be pumping all of them up. So to see more about what we've talked about here, more about what SHOT 2010 was all about, check it out. I'm Michael Bain for Downrange Television, for OutdoorChannel.com, and hey, we'll see you next week.